guys and welcome back to the channel. Now so far we've looked at several different anime shows from Baki to Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Doctor Stone, Fist of the North Star and so many more. And so it's time to explore a new series and that's why today we're going to be breaking down scenes from the anime show Berserk. Now this is one of many videos where I'll be covering the topic of swordsmen in anime. We'll be looking at Zoro from One Piece and Giamon from Lupin the Third. Now if there's any other swordsmen that you want me to break down, let me know down in the comments. But today we're going to be breaking down Guts as he takes on a hundred soldiers. We're going to be looking at some fight injuries as well as how Guts is able to wield his ridiculous sword Dragon Slayer and so much more. So if that's what you're ready for, don't forget to give this video a like. Let's begin. <laughs> Oh god, what a sword, and I can't believe that something that huge could possibly exist or even be swung. But I did actually take a look at the dimensions of Gut's sword, otherwise known as the Dragon Slayer. Now apparently it's 6 foot 5 and weighs in excess of 220 pounds, which if you deal in kilos is over 100 kilos. Now the largest known sword to have actually existed and been used belonged to that of a Pharisian legendary warrior known as Pierre Gerloffdoni. This sword was a staggering seven foot long and weighed about 14 and a half pounds. So there's a massive weight difference between these two blades. Now the problem with Guts' weapon is that it's just so heavy. I mean, it can definitely be lifted by someone like, I don't know, the Mountain from Game of Thrones, but to be swung around and used in a fight I would have to say would be near enough impossible. Oh god, she is a savage. I mean, she's sliced just in the sweet spots between the gaps in their armour. The first one there, it looks like she's slashed the carotid artery, and then the second, it looks like she might have gone for one of the common iliac vessels, or possibly even the femoral artery. But let's have a look at a suit of armour, and try and work out where the weak points are, and how that leaves you vulnerable. So basically, they're the places that you can't put rigid plates because of a need for mobility. And unfortunately, these locations are some of the areas where you have essential vital structures like blood vessels. For example, you've got the armpit where we find the auxiliary artery, you have the elbow where you find the brachial artery, the neck where you have the common carotid artery, and then in the groin where you find the femoral artery. So seemingly, all of these areas are where you have the largest blood vessels in the body and the highest risk of bleeding to death. So it would make sense for an experienced swordsman to target these points to take out their opponents really efficiently. Oh god, okay, he sliced him straight down the gap between his helmet and his breastplate, another vulnerable point. But I guess this guy is feeling pretty unlucky because you couldn't have predicted an aerial attack holding a weapon like that. And the argument could be had that he should be wearing more armour because you can protect these areas. But then again, it's a fine balance between wearing armour for protection and not allowing too much armour to restrict your mobility and agility when fighting. Oh god, and there she goes again. She sliced the auxiliary artery in the armpit and then the radial artery again in the wrist. But you're probably thinking, how quickly would it take to bleed out from these injuries? Well really, from arterial bleeds like this, you'll be looking at death through blood loss in under three minutes. Why aren't those areas better protected? <laughs> Oh, 
しかもサムソンの装甲の厚みは通常の3倍たとえ岩の下敷きになろうとビクともせぬ Gosh, OK, so his armor is apparently three times thicker than normal He really looks like a walking ball of metal But I wonder how much does armor like this weigh? Well, a conventional suit of armor would weigh anywhere between 45 to 55 pounds, or 20 to 25 kilos, respectively. And then a helmet, you're looking about 4 to 8 pounds. Now, putting this into perspective, this is less than what a fireman would wear if they had their oxygen canisters on their back, and less than that of what a modern soldier would be wearing. But he did say that his armor was three times thicker, which will come to a total weight of 150 pounds or 75 kilos. That's the equivalent of covering an average male on your back all the time. It sounds like some Goku weight training would be in order to allow you to become accustomed to be walking around with that amount of weight. <laughs> Gosh, this iron ball doesn't look like something you'd want to mess with. And it's clearly a flail weapon, and it's known as a morning star. And interestingly, when these were first created, they were designed to have a rounded surface to help prevent blood spilling. And funnily enough, the idea of a bloodless weapon made maces and flails far more popular among the more religious Christian warriors at the time. And just breaking down the design of the weapon a bit further, so it's designed to be swung around to gain momentum before striking your opponent. But it was also quite a dangerous weapon to wield, as the unpredictable nature of a swinging weapon meant that there was a chance that you could accidentally strike yourself. <laughs> Oh god, and there we see a possible repercussion of the ricochet of this weapon. I'd imagine that the power of the impact of this would be down to the amount of momentum you can gain in the swing, which of course would be related to the weight of the ball at the end of the flail, as well as the length of the chain. But if we're looking at injuries, a strike like this would lead to complete decimation of your skull. Cue the Mortal Kombat X ray scene. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like Guts is playing that outdoor spring ball game. But I'd imagine that it would need a massive amount of power to be able to bounce back a ball like this. Fortunately, the dimensions of the Dragon Slayer sword are that it's wide enough for you to create a big enough surface area to knock this back. The only disadvantage, however, is how quickly a blade can become blunt. <laughs> Oh, okay, it looks like he's pierced his helmet, but this would be so difficult to do if this was just a normal sword. If this were a normal sword, you'd expect at most that he might dent the helmet, which might lead to some underlying soft tissue injuries and possibly restrict. But I guess we are talking about the Dragon Slayer sword here, which does weigh in excess of 100 kilos, so cutting off someone's head or piercing a helmet should be a piece of cake. You know what though, if it were me, I probably would have just lifted up the visor and stabbed him in the face. You're so vulnerable and exposed. <laughs> Oh, an arrow straight to the biceps. Now, this might look like a really bad injury, but if the arrow has missed the biceps tendon, Guts could theoretically still use that arm to wield his sword. It just might make lifting the sword a little more challenging. Another cool and accurate aspect of this scene is how you see that the arrows just ricochet off his breastplate armor, which is pretty accurate for the time. <laughs> あんまし良く切れねえ。その代わり厚みも重さも波のもんの3倍以上ある。一発で死にそこなうと痛いぞ。<笑> 
Oh gosh, yes. So getting smacked by a blunted sword. Now the sword might not be sharp enough to penetrate the metal and the skin, but it's heavy enough to cause crush injuries to bones. Now these could result in open fractures with splinters of bone coming through the skin, which could still make you bleed to death. Also, getting hit by anything that weighs over 100 kilos can cause massive internal organ damage and hemorrhage, which still makes this blunt sword a lethal weapon. Oh gosh, and the way that he's swinging around this sword, he's almost using it as a guillotine, slicing off limbs and brutalizing these soldiers. But I also have to give credit to how iconic the animation and the theme are. As soon as you hear that berserk theme, you know exactly what anime you're watching. It's just a shame because I wasn't that fond of the updated CGI version of the Berserker adaptation. I just don't think that the CGI anime is as good as the traditional anime style. What do you guys think? Let me know of a CGI anime that you think has done it well. Put to the stomach! Oh, so that's a wooden dart through the hand. But you wouldn't have thought something so puny as a wooden dart would be able to injure guts. But I guess, what would be the impact of an injury like this? Well, if the dart has gone the whole way through his hand, it's unlikely to have fractured any bones and therefore makes it a less serious injury. What is almost certainly damaged are what are called the interosseous muscles that are found between the finger bones. Now, these help to splay out the fingers and abduct them, which might have affected his grip strength. And so long as the other structures aren't damaged, he's likely to make a full recovery from an injury like this. And there we go, Gut snaps that dart like it's a twig. And I guess as a doctor that would be the most sensible way to remove it, rather than pulling it through and doing more damage to underlying structures. Guts on the other hand probably sees this as a splinter and looks to me like the type of guy who would say, nah, my body will push it out by itself. Oh, okay, so he's effectively shish kebab this other guy, using his blade to effectively skewer him through the neck. But actually, remembering the dimensions of the Dragon Slayer blade, he's probably just decapitated him. But as you can see, Guts is swinging this sword around as if it's child's play. He must have awesome core strength, shoulder strength, forearm strength, and of course, grip strength to hold onto this blade. Now, I'm not 100% sure on the muscle groups you'd need to develop to be a strong swordsman. Maybe I'd need to look into this in another video. If any of you guys out there know, let me know down in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> what a badass line. This is something that Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone would have said in the 80s. So it looks like Guts really hasn't sustained that much damage during this battle. I mean, it looks like he's maybe taken a few flesh wounds, one to the tricep with this arrow, and then a spear to the quadriceps muscles. And at worst, he's probably torn a tendon. But what I would be most worried about as a doctor watching all these injuries is his chances of developing infection and tetanus from all of these cuts. If you were one of my patients, I'd want to put some anaesthetic into those lacerations, give them a good scrub and a good clean, stitch them up with a couple of sutures, and give them a tetanus jab and some antibiotics. But it looks like back in these days, you'd get a pat on the back, a beer, and told to carry on. 
これをまさかあいつ一人でガッツ OK so that's all 100 soldiers taken out And what a badass character Guts really is. And I hear he just gets more brutal as the anime and manga go on. I really can't wait to watch more. Okay, that's all we have time for today. There was so much blood and gore in today's scene, and I hear this is just the start of it. If there's any other scenes in this anime that you'd like me to break down, please leave those down in the comments below. Otherwise, why not let one of these two videos keep you entertained, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Thanks!